In this video, we're going to go over how to factor quadratic expressions. So you probably already know what a quadratic expression is, and we're just going to look at various forms of quadratics that you may be required to factor for whatever reason. All right, so the first type that we're going to look at is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c when a is equal to 1. So what does that mean? If a is equal to 1, you're going to see nothing written here. Because if a is equal to 1, you're just going to have x squared. 1x squared is the same as x squared. So that's the first type that we'll look at. So let's do that right now. And in this example, we're going to have x squared minus 4x minus 21. And if you're asked to factor it, the first thing that you have to do is separate your x squared. So you get x in one parenthesis and x in the other parenthesis. And now we're going to look for two numbers with a product of negative 21. So when we say product, what do we mean? We mean, mean multiply. So the two numbers we're looking for will multiply to get negative 21. And they will add, they will have a sum of the middle number. So they will have a sum of a negative 4. Now, if you're not sure how to, like if you're overwhelmed by trying to find these factors, two numbers that multiply to negative 21 and add to get negative 4, it's easier to figure out that. And then from there, check which two numbers add to ha get, give you negative 4. So for example, off to the side, we can have 1 and 21. Of course, one of them would have to be negative. But there's no way for that to combine to give you 4. So we can try for the next factor of 21. Well, 2 is not a factor of 21, but 3 is. 3 goes with 7. And if you combine those in this way, so not that way, sorry, this way, then when you add those two numbers, you do get negative 4. So those are the two numbers that we're looking for. We have plus 3 and minus 7. So if you multiply that out to check, you should get what you were given originally. And we won't check right now because we have quite a few of these examples to go through. But that's how you factor something in this form. Let's move on to another type of example. So it is absolutely essential that you not only know how to take out a common factor, but you remember that you can take out a common factor when there is one. Sometimes these problems are, are just as easy as the one we just did, um, or easier, but you may forget to take out the common factor, and that can be the death of you. So always remember it's, it, it's a possibility sometimes, though. So. Always remember that it's sometimes a possibility. All right, let's do it. Um, so let's look at an example here. And in my example, we have 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. Now, this looks a lot harder because the a is not equal to 1. However, when you see that the a is not equal to 1, always check to see if there's a common factor. A number that can go into every term. In this case, there is, and it happens to be 2. So if we take our 2 and we put it on the outside, we can now divide everything in this expression by 2. So when you divide 2x squared by 2, you get x squared. Again, divide the next term by 2, and you get plus 6x, and finally, divide the next term by 2, and you get plus 9. But we're not done because this actually can be factored further. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to look for two numbers with a product of 9 and a sum of 6. Two numbers with a product of 9 and a sum of 6. And our two numbers are 3 and 3. And yes, we can use the same numbers. And as we did before, we are separating our x squared, and we have to rewrite our 2. So we now have 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now, that is the answer for this one. 
But I actually think it's so important to remember to take out a common factor that I want to look at <clears throat> another example where we can take out a common factor. All right, so I'm going to do a funny looking one. And it looks a little something like this. 5x squared minus 15x. All right, so again, we would look for a common factor. And most people pick out that the common factor is 5. And that is somewhat correct. But it's not complete. There's actually something else that can go into both of our terms. So 5 can go into that, 5 can go into that. But x can also go into both of these terms. So the common factor is actually 5x. Now we do the same thing we did before by dividing each term by our common factor. So that term divided by 5x gives us x, and this term divided by 5x gives us minus 3. And now it is factored. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit harder here, and we're going to factor something in this form. ax squared plus bx plus c, and a will not be 1 anymore. So let's look at an example here. And in my example, I have 2x squared plus x minus 3. Now, if you were listening carefully a few minutes ago, what is the first thing you should look for? If you said you should always look for a common factor, you are correct. But now the question is, is there a common factor? And the answer is no, there is no common factor. Unfortunately, there is nothing that can go into all three of our terms here. 2 can't, x can't, so we have to now figure out another way to do this. So in this video, I'm going to do trial and error, but I have another snazzy little method called the diamond box method, and if you are interested, look at my diamond box video. But for now, we'll keep it simple, and we'll just do trial and error. So... As we've done before, we're going to set up two sets of parentheses, and we're going to separate our 2x squared. Now, technically, when I say we can separate our 2x squared, I'll do this off to the side. We could do it this way. But that doesn't make any sense because the whole reason we are factoring is because we want this guy here, or x squared, to be apart from each other. So the only other way we can separate our 2x squared is having a 2x in one parenthesis and an x in the other. And it doesn't matter if it goes first or second. Um, so let's just put our 2x here and our x over here. So now our x squared is separate. All right. So now we're going to look for two numbers, and I'll write this down. So we're going to look for two numbers with a product of c. Now, unfortunately, hold on, let me write this down first, with a product, C. Now, unfortunately, we no longer are able to look for two numbers with a product of C and the sum of B. That two is messing us up. So we're really only looking for two numbers with a product of C, and we're going to have to try to see if it works. If it doesn't work, then we have to try again, and if it doesn't work, we just have to keep trying until it works. What do I mean when I say work, though? Right, so for it to work, when we try something, we want it to give us our original expression. So let's see it happen, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess something that's wrong, just so you can see this process. But if you know what, it, what is right, then, you know, bear with me. All right, so... We're looking for two numbers with a product of negative 3. And we have to think about order in this case because we have different things in both parentheses. We have a 2x in one and an x in the other. So 3 and negative 1 have a product of negative 3. Negative 3 and 1 have a product of negative 3. 1, and you got it, negative 3. And the last one is negative 1. And 3. How could this get 
so much more annoying. Well, it could get so much more annoying if the number wasn't three and if instead it was 120 that has a billion factors. It actually doesn't have a billion factors, but it has several factors. So the more factors that our number has is the more things you have to guess and check and guess and check. All right, but fortunately, three is prime. And since it's negative, we do have to check with the signs as well, but that's not too bad. All right, so I'm going to first test out. Let's try minus three plus one. And we're going to check. And we're going to check to see if we get our original expression by doing first outer inner last multiplication. Okay, so when we multiply the two first terms, we get 2x squared outer, we get plus 2x inner, we get minus 3x, and last, we get minus 3. Really and truly, the only things that were super important to check was outer and inner, so the two middle terms. So when we put those two like terms together, we get minus x. However, we are looking for plus x here. So we know then that it is not minus 3 and plus 1. So that is not the answer. So that guess showed us that we were wrong and we have to try again. All right, so at that point, you can cross that out, erase whatever. I'm going to erase it because I would like us to focus on what is right. All right, so what I'm going to try next is plus 3 and minus 1. Plus 3 and minus 1. Let's do this. All right, so again, we're going to check, and this is just a guess, and so we have to check it. Um, and then, as I just said, you know, first outer, inner, last to check, but the really and truly, only the outer and inner terms are important. The F and the L are not so important, so we won't even worry about those two. So let's check our outer term. 2x times minus 1 gives us ne negative 2x, and inner 3 times x gives us plus 3x. You put those good things together right here, and you get x positive, which is our middle term, which tells us that we are now correct, and that is the factor answer. Okay, so you've been very, very patient, and now we're on the last type of factoring that we're going to look at in this video, and that is the difference of two squares. Now, the difference of two squares is actually one of the easier types, but if you don't recognize it, it tends to be hard because you're like, what the heck is this? Why does it look so hard? I don't understand what's going on. Okay, so let's look at an easy one first. So for example, we have x squared minus 81. Now, x squared minus 81 well, we have a perfect square here, and we also have a perfect square over here. There are two perfect squares, and you are subtracting them. So, subtracting them, i.e., difference. Okay, difference. That's why that's called the difference of two squares. So you can recognize it as a difference of two squares if you have two perfect squares and you fi you're finding the difference. Now, what do you do with this? Anytime you see the difference of two squares, again, you separate it out into your two sets of parentheses. Make sure that your signs are different when you are factoring. Different signs. Make sure that you remember to do that. Okay. Also, all you need to put inside the parentheses is the square root of each term. So x, because that's the square root of x squared, and in this case 9, because that's the square root of 81. And the same thing goes in the other one. All right. That was a pretty easy one, and most people would probably get that even if they didn't remember about the different difference of two squares. But here's a slightly harder looking one. Same idea, it just looks harder. Okay, cool. 
So on the left side, we have, again, a perfect square, 9 and also x squared. Together, they're a perfect square. And we have a perfect square over here. So therefore, difference of two squares. First things first, make sure your signs are different. And then square root of 9x squared is 3x. Square root of 25y squared is 5y. And we are done.